I started barbering uh, probably like 15. I, uh, I lost my pops. To, uh, I lost my pops. My pops went to the pen, and he left his clipper bag. And so, man, probably took a few haircuts and going to the barber shop, not getting what I getting what we wanted. Before I was just like, man, I can, I can try to do this at the house. Polo to the float out. You already know though. It's Adamville for real. You see your hoe, just take a photo. I'm repping that on photo with a fofo on your bro. Got that dodo, thought that he could ride the play up for some dodo. Oh no, oh no, I'm so Allen Temple. I'm so England Manor. I'm so Misty Valley. I ain't gonna lie to you, I spent, I spent majority of my money on activists and Jordans. Probably about the first two and a half, three years. So uh, after that, man, I uh, I moved from Barber King to Mr. Crispy's. I realized how much money I was blowing on the nonsense. And you know, so I started to take it a little bit serious. More serious than what I had been taking it. Like my first class was uh, Dallas, Texas. I went to a Pacino's class. Uh, Shout out to that boy, Norm 350. He actually, the person that I am today, he wanted me to be that a few years ago. But I wasn't trying to do all of that. I felt like it was real extra. So, you know, having true friends that really, uh, that really see more potential in, in you than to yourself, you know, it started making me take it more serious than what I was doing. I'm real big, right now I'm real big on social media. Uh, it's a lot of it's it's a lot of barbers. I really didn't take my barbering that serious until I got on Instagram, you know, and seen, seen some dope barbers out there. It's dope, it's dope barbers out there from coast to coast, east to west. You know, man, I, I got a lot of people I look up to, you know, like E, cutting my hair. Uh, my boy AG at Black Label, TJ. Uh man, you got Tyrese, you got Junior, you got a lot of people that I went to barber school with that uh when I didn't know how to cut her, you know, they taught me what they taught me what I needed to know or what I wanted to know. I got to watch them and shadow them. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, Chuck, you know, old school barber. He been cutting her longer than I've been alive from the north side. Uh you know, you got Chuck. You got all of the pioneers from north side of Tulsa, you know, Charlie's Angels, where the spot, you know, the spot, Skyline, you know, all of those. There's a whole lot of barbershops out north that made it look cool to cut her when I was a kid and a teenager. So it's just, it's just wanting to be a part of the culture that I've seen for the longest growing up. I would tell any barber right now that that look at this profession, look at this craft as a profession, something you want to pursue. Be patient. It's not, you can't rush it. I mean, it took me seven years to get to where I'm at right now. So I can honestly say being patient. Being patient and being different and being willing to step outside the box in your comfort zone and do something, do something that works for you. The only thing I can tell young and upcoming barbers or upcoming barber period is don't get discouraged and don't let don't let people tell you what you can and can't do. I'm finna retire the whole Chug the Barber name. Uh right now we going by C T V. <laughs> uh man, it's just a lot, man. I'm finna uh I'm finna move in I'm finally finna move into my own spot. So I'm finna have my own shop. Well, my own space to cut her. Uh, man, I'm gonna branch out. I'm gonna start doing some, uh, doing more classes, more one-on-one -on -one type stuff. Given the knowledge that I've acquired, you know, I'm gonna start giving it back. Start teaching a little bit more. And I, I got a little bit, I got a few more classes that I wanna take that's gonna really, you know, try to set me apart, you know. It's a whole lot of new stuff that's happening out here in the world that uh, people would probably love to see in Tulsa. You know, we so small, so anything big is just greatness here. So it's just a lot. I think my clients appreciate the fact that they get to grow with me. You know, like uh, 
you know, my boy Cuddy over there in the corner, he uh he'd been around for about seven years since we didn't start this whole thing. I I cut his hair off the first time. Now we watching it grow again, but it's just like I get to grow with all my customers. Everything that I've wanted to do, my customers have always, you know, gave me full support. They've never, you know, doubted anything that I've said, anything that I wanted to do, anything that I wanted to try, experiment on. My customers have always been there day one, you know, shout out to all of my customers, even if I've cut your hair one time, you know, shout out to anybody that's ever sat in my chair. <clears throat> because at the end of the day, people make me. I don't make people, so you know I have to. Uh, I have to give credit where credit is due. People, people choose to get their hair cut by me. It's not like it's not forced. So I, I think people and my customers appreciate me because you know it's just it's taking that extra time. You know it may be something as small as putting the scissors to their head to get all the loose hairs. It may be dusting off the hair. It may be taking that extra time on the edge up. Yeah. Redressing a lot of sauce. <laughs> <laughs> to make it look as sharp as possible. It's just all of those little things that go into doing a haircut and giving a haircut, providing a service for the person, just going that extra mile. It's not really about it's not really about the money. Progression on me, progression on three! Here we go. Like this. Uh, seven days a week.